Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Please kneel. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself any idol. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, The first commandment is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son Jesus Christ came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that we may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Or, the Israelites set out by the way to the, de- to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, And we were, by nature, children of wrath, like everyone else. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that... In the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. 
For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Halitosis and bromidosis, bad breath and smelly feet. They don't exactly top the list of qualities we look for in romantic interests, friends, or coworkers. Hence the obsession by those who possess these malodorous emissions to eliminate their social impact. Suggested home remedies for bad breath abound. One can chew a whole clove, brush teeth twice a day with baking powder, suck the juice from a cut lemon, chew a mouthful of sunflower seeds and then drink water, swallow probiotic enzymes to balance stomach digestion, gargle pineapple juice, eat parsley, or use dental floss that has been pre-soaked with tree seed oil. And for those who have fragrant, if not flagrant, feet, there are plenty of things you might try as well. You can change your socks twice a day. Dust your feet with absorbent cornstarch. Take daily oral zinc tablets. Or slather armpit antiperspirant on your soles and between your toes. However, the most commonly suggested remedy for embarrassing foot odor is to soak one's feet in a black tea solution for 30 minutes each morning and evening until the smell slowly goes away over the course of a couple of weeks. For this approach to work, you'll need to have plenty of discretionary time on your hands, or more accurately, on your feet. There must be a better solution for sufferers of these pungent maladies. If we can put a man on the moon, view cell nuclei with microscopes and create seedless watermelons, then surely science can offer some help for our potentially putrid parts. Scientists have already told us that smelly feet and bad breath are caused by bacteria that proliferate in those areas of the body. And British researchers have isolated certain bacteria that eat those bacteria which cause bad breath. These potential stink killers grow on and consume the smelly compounds found in the mouth and on the feet. 
So imagine the potential commercial applications. Fill your mouth with bacteria to take care of that mouth full of bacteria. Or cover your feet with microorganisms to fix that sock full of microorganisms. Doesn't that sound far too close to the absurdity of the childhood nursery rhyme, there was an old lady? One may remember that she swallowed a spider that wriggled and wiggled and tiggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Perhaps she'll die. So it seems odd to swallow insects to kill swallowed insects or to eat bacteria to kill other bacteria. But consider the similar absurdity of the biblical remedy for poisonous snake bites. Stare at a snake on a stake. That was the prescription offered Israel in today's lesson from the book of Numbers. The Hebrews had been wandering through the desert on their displaced pilgrimage between Egyptian enslavement and the eventual sacred home of the promised land. The journey was frustrating. Their homes, always temporary. And the food, subpar and monotonous. Just imagine camping with your family for 40 years. In Numbers chapter 11, the people were fed up with the food, tired of eating manna bread, manna porridge, manna stew, and manna pasta. And so they complained to Moses, give us meat. And in God's mercy, he granted them quail for food. Now, in Numbers chapter 21, they're complaining yet again. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable stuff. But this time, instead of sending his mercy through a banquet, God sends his punishment through snakes. He's displeased with their complaining, and we might even imagine he's a bit insulted. They're ignorant of his past and present provision. Instead, they're focused more on what they want God to do in the future than what he has already done for them. Maybe snakes will give them a better perspective on manna. And it does. Snake bites lead them to confession. We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. And they turn from their complaints and plead with Moses to seek God's mercy on their behalf. Like God's mercy through the quails, he now grants mercy through forgiveness. But the remedy for their consequences is an interesting one. Like bacteria to deal with bacteria, or an insect to deal with insects, God offers them a snake to deal with their snakes. Moses fashions a bronze serpent and places it on a tree limb to lift up in front of the people. When people afflicted by the snakes turn their gaze upon Moses' snake, they're healed. While that might seem a bit absurd, it's actually quite beautiful. You see, God offers them a symbolic anti-venom. Moses does not produce a magic snake that does the healing. A miraculous serpent like Aaron's staff turned snake that consumed the staff snakes produced by Pharaoh's magicians. No, God Himself provides the healing and forgiveness. But He uses this snake symbol 
so that his people will recognize the connection between their complaining and their punishment. It makes their forgiveness and healing an act of confronting the symbol of their sin as the means of receiving healing through that symbol. How poignant that must have been. In their confession and repentance, God simultaneously shows them their sin and his grace. Problem and solution in the same bronze serpent. Max Lucado says, to see sin without grace is despair. To see grace without sin is arrogance. To see them in tandem is conversion. Sin and grace in one symbol. Problem and solution in one moment. A work of God in response to the sin of his people. The cross of Jesus Christ. For Israel, their sin and their healing were lifted before them on a tree limb. And for those who would receive the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, our sin and our healing are lifted up before us on the Calvary tree. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. The cure for bacteria is bacteria. The cure for snakes is a snake. And the cure for death is a death. Our God is an artist, weaving symbol and reality together to paint the picture of his redemption story on our behalf. And like all great works of art, this redemption picture has the innate ability to evoke a response in the viewer. For the Christian, the cross creates an intimate connection between our sin choices and the consequences they bore upon our Savior. Thus, our sin and God's grace are contained in the same moment. For the Israelites, confession of their sin of complaint involved recognizing their choice proclaiming it as wrongful, and then turning to God's healing symbol so that their sin and his grace would be recognized together. Christian confession is the same, and it's only redemptive when it involves those same three movements. We pause to recognize that we have made a choice against the pleasure of God. And there's healing in this recognition. We proclaim these sins to him in our personal prayers, in our liturgies, and in our confessions. And finally, we turn our gaze upon the reality of our forgiveness, the grace of Christ given us at the cross. Ultimately, there is healing only in our Savior, whose physical death on the cross cures the spiritual death from our sin. The complete masterpiece of God's redemptive work of art happens only when the completed work of Christ's cross meets our complete submission to forgiveness through confession. It is God's lavish grace curing our sinful choices. That is a healing that 
bacteria application or spider swallowing or snake gazing can never provide. A death to cure death. Our sin and God's grace in one symbol, the cross. Standing, let us say together the Nicene Creed, page 9 in the leaflet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, we are worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Dabney, our bishop, John and Jerry, our priests, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, Jane, our mayor, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. 
for deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Be ever present, O Lord, with those who are suffering from the coronavirus. Strengthen all who are on the medical front lines against COVID-19. Enable those in authority to make good and timely decisions about matters related to the virus. Help us all to do what we can to slow the spread of the disease. Empower the church to be the church in creative, calm, and compassionate ways. And bring this pandemic to a swift end so that lives are spared. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everyone. Please be seated. Welcome to St. Andrews on this, the fourth Sunday in Lent. Good to see you here on this beautiful morning. I'm glad to have those who are watching at home with us as well today. As you can see, it is Laetare Sunday. So you might be saying, what's that? Well, Laetare means rejoice in Latin. And it comes from the first sentence of the medieval Latin mass that begins this day with Isaiah 66.10. Laetere Jerusalem, or Rejoice Jerusalem. So this is sort of a midpoint in Lent. Uh, Lent, first Sunday in Lent was three Sundays ago, and we've reached the midpoint, and three Sundays from now, of course, is Easter Day. So we have a little bit of the joyful anticipation of the victory that is to be won here in a few weeks. Good to see you all here on time this morning. You've obviously sprung forward there, and uh, you look bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, even though you've lost your one hour of sleep, but good to see you here today. One thing you'll find in your bulletin is the little envelope that says Easter flowers and music. We do that every Lent, uh, and if you'd like to help out either with music or with the uh, flowers, the Easter flowers for the decorations for Easter Day, uh, I invite you to be generous and return that uh, to the church. If you're watching at home, you can simply just send a check-in uh, marked Easter flowers or Easter music. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to do his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through your prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, 
that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. I him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. serve the Lord.